the Lord has published his word, the Lord has sent forth his word, and great is the company of them that publish it. Let us pray that God will have a word for you today. For the month, Holy Spirit, we adore you. Who is like unto thee, O God? There is no one like you. And you will live, and you will move, and you will have a being. Speak to us, O Lord, and your servant, hear it. In Jesus' holy name we pray. Amen. I'm going to do a reading of the scriptures, and we are all going to read it together. So that we can understand what the Lord has in store for you. Especially this month and today. Open with me. John chapter 2. I believe that doing the right thing, brothers and sisters, is not difficult. If you are true to yourself, if you are true to people around you, and if you are true to God. John chapter 2, I read very quickly from verses 1 to 10. So if you have a Bible and the writing material, let's fire on. On the third day, there was a wedding in Cana of Galilee, and the mother of Jesus was there. Now both Jesus and his disciples were invited to the wedding. Everybody say invited. invited. It's good because they did not get crushed. They were invited. And when they ran out of wine, the mother of Jesus said to him, They have no wine. Jesus said to her, Woman, what does your concern have to do with me? My hour has not yet come. His mother said to the servant, Whatever he says to you, do it. Now there was there, they were set there six water pots of stone according to the manner of purification of the Jews, containing 20 or 30 gallons apiece. Verse 7. Jesus said to them, Fill the water pots with water. And they filled them up to the brim. And he said to them, Draw some out now and take it to the master of the feast. And they took it. Verse 9 and 10. When the master of the feast had tasted the water that was made wine and did not know where it came from, but the servants who had drawn the water knew, the master of the feast called the bridegroom. And he said to him, Every man at the beginning set out the good wine. And when the guests have well drunk, then that which is inferior, but you have kept the good wine until now. You will agree with me that there are many questions in these verses of the scripture that must have come to mind from these 1 to 10 verses that I've read. But one thing I've found out there is, can any problem overpower anyone if you know that God is there with you? If you find yourself, as our brother and sister did, each time the home office closed the door, they know there's a problem. I didn't even know that Sister Julia can fast that much. She fasted and fasted. And you see, but the truth of the matter is that you don't need to fast to hear from God. You only need to fast to humble yourself before God. Because God speaks to us, but are we listening? But look at this. There was a problem at a party. But then when I read this, and some few days ago with my family at the Bible study, there were some questions that I was 
asking the Lord. How was it that Jesus was at a party, invited to a party, while at the same time they ran out of wine? Jesus was in the house, and yet there was a problem. Was it a coincidence, I ask, that Jesus was at a party where they ran out of wine? Or was this the reason why he came? Because he knew that God knew there would be a problem. I'm just thinking, and I want you to think along with me. Because many times we find ourselves in the same palaver. We are children of God. And the Holy Spirit is in us. And yet we have this painful condition. It could be a malady of the body, disease. It's been there for years. And it will not move an inch. And another won't come. Another problem. And yet, God is there with us. No wonder in John chapter 9, they brought a man that was born blind. And then the people ask, was this as a result of his sin or his parents' sin? Somebody must have sinned. Otherwise, why would he be born blind? That was the assumption. Because many at times we assume things and we assume wrongly. Because there's no sound biblical principle out of it. Jesus Christ said, no. Neither was he born. Neither be, this happened because of his sin or his parents' sin. But for the glory of God. So I was asking this question. Was it a coincidence that Jesus was at a party he was invited to? And they ran out of wine. Or was this just the reason why he was there? A coincidence is something that happened by chance. Everybody say by chance. If you are going on the road and at that time you, are, you don't have money. And you will be praying God, to God that God I need money. And you are just going on the road. And then you saw something that looks like money on the road. And it's, you look very close and happen to be 10 pounds. Wow. That's what we call by chance. But if it was the reason why Jesus was there, if that was the reason why Jesus was there, that is because there was a problem, how come Jesus questioned his mom? She said, woman, what does your concern have to do with me? My hour has not yet come. So I put it to you. It wasn't a coincidence. Pardon me. It, was, it wasn't there because of the problem. It's likely going to be a coincidence. Do you get my reasoning? Because if it was there for that same reason... He would not have questioned his mother, what has, that, what has your concern of no wine got to do with me? Do you understand what I'm saying? So, that was coincidental. But then, if it was coincidental, just like every other guest, Jesus was invited and his disciples and his mom were invited there. However, they met a need. So in life, on your journey to significance, you will meet certain people with needs. Even though you did not set out for them, but something in you will not want to leave them as you met them. True? True? And that was the case of Jesus on that day. I am talking briefly on the title Seized the Moment 
by doing the right thing. Seize the moment by doing the right thing. Bible talks about Ephesians, what we read today, 5, talking about redeeming the time for the days are evil. That you need not to be fools, but to walk carefully. Not as fools, but as wise. Understanding what the will of the Lord is. So anyone that is a child of God here, and you have been walking with God, and you have an understanding of what the will of God is, regardless of the challenges that come to you, the understanding that you have will keep you. As in the scripture said, that when wisdom enters your heart, and knowledge is pleasant to you, discretion will preserve you, and understanding will keep you. David said in Psalm 119, verse 144, said, Give me understanding so that I sh can live. L give me understanding and I shall live. Understanding will keep you alive. And that is why we need to understand what the will of God is. God is always looking for a man that will stand in the gap. A man that will seize the moment to do what is right. As you find in Ezekiel 22, verse 29 to 30, you don't need to open to it. Ezekiel 22, 29 to 30. I'm looking for a man that will be a wall, a defense, and stand in the gap so that destruction will not come on the land. But I found none. If only you and I can stand out, stand tall and make the difference, just like Jesus did at the wedding in Canaan of Galilee. If only we can do that, to do what is right. It doesn't matter how long you have made mistakes. What matters is doing it rightly. It says there is a way that seems right, appears to be right. But at the end of it, there is destruction. Just because it appears to be right, doesn't make it right. The only one that can define the rightness is God, because God is right. Hello? Are you with me? Even if you have gone donkey years in the wrong direction. It only takes a fool to continue in the wrong direction after you have been told it is the right way. It is not the right way. So if you have been told the right way, but you are in the wrong way, what would the wise people do? Turn back. Seize the moment and do what is right. In 2 Kings chapter 5, 2 Kings chapter 5, very quickly, verse 1. 2 Kings chapter 5, verse 1, a scripture you know very well. Now Naaman, commander of the army of the king of Syria, was a great and honorable man in the eyes of his master, because by him the Lord has given victory to Syria. He was also a mighty man of valor, but he was a leper. There, is a, there was a but in his life. You had everything, but. I don't know where you are today in the journey of life, but thank God for the but that is in our lives that keeps us tamed and humble before God. Without that but, you will feel as if you are bigger than God. But the but is the one that keeps you Humbled, looking for the mercy of God. Am I talking to somebody? It's because God is in control of your life. And he will surely remove the boat if you move in his right way. God is always on the right way. Look at it. 
And Syrians had gone out on raids and had brought back captive a young girl from the land of Israel. She waited on Naaman's wife. This maid was Naaman's wife's own. Then she said to her mistress, If only my master were with the prophet who is in Samaria, for it will heal him of his leprosy. Information is very important in God helping us to get to where he's leading us. Because you are in the right way, he will send people your way that will guide you to your ultimate, to your destiny. But at his own time, hello, now, this was a man, he was wealthy but not healthy because he was a leper. And his wife's servant from Israel was serving in his house. And then this woman or this girl happened to know the, med the medical condition of Naaman. And she was now the one God is going to use to help Naaman. She heard that her master was a leper. And she was now telling the wife of the leper that, come to think of it, where I'm coming from in Israel, there was a man there, a man of God. If he prayed for you, for my master, the leprosy, will be gone. We are not told for how long Naaman had the leprosy for. You see, it doesn't matter how long you have been suffering. What matters is that when God is in control, that suffering has an end date. Amen. God will see to it that the end date does not go past you. The problem will have to go. Because if there's a problem that has a start date, because there's a start date, there's an end date. God said in the Bible, the Pharaoh is just poor for a noise. His appointed time has expired. When the time comes, God will take you out of that condition. But you must be in the right way. Matthew 7, 14. Matthew 7, 14 said, Narrow is the gate. Difficult is the way. That leads to life. But only few find it. You know why? Only few find it? Because only few that find it, they have sold out their lives to the Lord. I'm not going to turn back. I married this man. I've married this woman. I'm not going to turn back. It doesn't matter what they throw in my way. The difficult way is always the right way. The difficult way what? is always the right way because God is there. How many people are finding things difficult here? So long is in the will of God for you, God is in the house. You will, you will, you will look back in some time to come and say, had it not been for the Lord, see what the Lord has done. Is somebody here? See what the Lord has done and God will do it for you. If he has done it for others, he will do it for you. Just because the road is difficult, don't lie on the, C on the CV. It's difficult. For some people, it's very difficult. You do not have a UK experience, so you now put all the experiences in the world that the one you did not do. It's difficult. But you see, guess what? If God is God, he doesn't need help of any man. Otherwise, it's not the God we're talking about. So if God is involved, you will have it God's way. Or no other way. Amen? Amen? And guess what? God will not disappoint you. I've never seen a man that ever trusted God and he was disappointed. But I've seen a man that did not trust God and of course, what do you expect? Broad is the way. Wide is the gate that leads to what? Destruction. And guess what? Many, many. 
Just because it's popular doesn't make it divine. Just because it's popular doesn't mean that God is there. Amen? Amen. You know, my name is Popular. <laughs> Hallelujah. Seize the moment and do the right thing. But guess what? In that 2 Kings chapter 5, verse 4, and Naaman went in and told his master. Naaman now, when, when he heard what this girl had said, Naaman now went in to tell the king, the king of Syria. Does and does said the girl who is from the land of Israel. Verse 5. So the king of Syria said, Go now and I will send a letter to the king of Israel. That's recommendation. Somebody is going to be recommended for greatness here. Amen. I will send a letter to the king of Israel. So he departed and took with him 10 talents of silver, 6,000 shekels of gold, and 10 changes of clothing. Then he brought the letter to the king of Israel, which said, Now be advised. When this letter comes to you, that I have sent Naaman, my servant, to you, that you may heal him of his leprosy. You thought that was easy. You thought that was simple for this king. Look at what has happened. Verse 7. And it happened when the king of Israel read the letter that he tore his clothes and said, Am I God to kill and make a life that this man sent a man to me to heal him of his leprosy? Therefore, please consider and see how he seeks a quarrel with me. God is looking for an occasion to heal Naaman. And so he directed Naaman to the king of Syria, who now wrote a letter of recommendation on his behalf and sent that to the king of Israel. And so this was what Elisha, the man of God, heard. Then, verse 10, Elisha sent a messenger to him saying, go and wash in the Jordan seven times. Jordan, from what you can perceive from me, is like a river that poor people use. But this Jordan was not in Syria, it was in Israel. Okay? And so the man came and said, wash yourself in Jordan seven times and your flesh shall be restored to you and you shall be clean. Verse 11, but Naaman became furious. Everybody say furious. Yes. He was angry. He said, and went away and said, I said to myself, it will surely come out of, to me, stand and call on the name of the Lord his God and wave his hand and place and heal the leprosy. And not a banner, and the Fapa, the rivers of Damascus, better than all the waters of Israel, that tells me that Jordan was not in Damascus. Could I not wash in them and be clean? So he turned and went away in a rage. You see, I know at times we get angry. But I'm going to tell you that anger really rests in the bosom of fools. When you are always getting angry, be careful because you might not be used by God. The man that God uses, I will tell you, one, two, three, how God can use you and you become fulfilled in life and you become profitable to God. Definitely, anger is not one of those qualities. See this man. He was angry. He was furious. And then he went away. Why was he annoyed, anyone? Was it not because of pride? 
So pride is definitely another thing you must not have if you are going to be used by God. Yes, wash the toilet. Me? Do you know what I was doing before? No, no. They were not asking you what you were doing before. This is a job that is available now. You mean to clean somebody's underside? Eh, yes. We know of doctors from Africa that came to UK. One of, I am one of them in those days. And we have to do that one just to make hands meet. I know of a medical doctor. I was working somewhere in London. He's a good friend of mine. And then one day, as he was carrying the potty of the, of the, of the patient, and then he walked past and he saw himself in the mirror. You know, the prodigal son came to himself. And suddenly, he came to himself. And he saw himself. Was this everything I have done in the medical school? Coming here to wash and clean somebody's bum. Is this it? I think God used that to talk to him. This place is sickling. You need to move on. You know, at times, God can use that to tell you, you stay too long here. Do something with your life. But did he not start with the humble one first? Yes. So, Naaman went away furious because of pride. Pride goes before fall. You cannot be refusing to change your ways and expecting the miracle to happen anyhow. The man that God might likely use to bring change must be willing to obey the word of God. He must be able to die to self. Somebody said he had self-respect. Oh, dignity. Which dignity? Your dignity has gone. Because look at Jesus Christ. He was hung on the cross. What dignity? He lost everything. If you are going to follow Jesus, you have to lose everything. That's why he says, follow me and I will make you. Why did you think that he changed the name of Jacob? A cheat. Because he know that you cannot continue on the same principle when you are following me. Hallelujah. Amen. So God is going to help you to understand what it means to die to self. When you die to self, it will raise you up. And now he presents you. See, this is my beloved, a woman well placed. Is that someone going somewhere here? You will get there. You will get there. As you can see, number two, the man that God might likely use. Not only will he be the one that will, is willing to obey the word of God. Because the mother of Jesus said to the servant, whatever he tells you to do, you must be ready to do that. If God says it is enough, I know you have been hurting. And this person has been, uh, is in the fault. Right. And you are really offended. That's why you are, that relationship has broken. But now I want you to go to that person and say, I am sorry. Hey, excuse me. I'm not the one that caused it. He is the one that did it. Yes, I know. Just say sorry. Ah, ah, sorry. <laughs> yes, you say sorry. Jesus Christ's mom knew. That's why he told those, those servants, whatever he tells you to do, do it. Can you just imagine if the, those servants got there and they saw these six water pots and they said, fill it with water. Can you just imagine them thinking, did this man, can he hear well? They said they've run out of wine and you are saying, fill the water pot with water. What has water got to do with wine? Excuse me, if you are going to fulfill your vision in life and work with God, obey every stupid instruction. Are you with me? Yes, sir. Okay. If you don't do it, you see, Elisha wanted 
the double portion of Elijah's anointing. Elisha knew that Elijah would be catapulted to heaven. What is the good? Why are you carrying the gift to heaven? The gift is only here, meant for people here. Uh, he now came to Elijah. He said, excuse me. Elijah asked him, what do you want from me before I'm taking? Ah, what I want is that I want double portion of everything God has given him. Ah, you've asked a very hard thing. Remember the story? Yes. Well, you've asked a very hard thing. You see, it's not the hardness of your request that matters to God. It is the heart by which you ask it. Is it that you want to show off or you want God to show off? Because if you have asked for the wrong reason, God will not give it to you. But if your reason is to please God and to serve humanity, he will give it to you. So it's not about hard question. Ah, Elijah said, you have asked a hard thing. But guess what? That's a condition. Every blessings of God, every blessing of God are conditional. If you can meet the condition, you will access the blessing. You hear me? Oh, God, heal me. God, I need a job. Hey, you know, it's not about the job. It's not about the heal me, heal me. Every condition, every blessing has a condition. If you fulfill the condition, you will access the blessing. That's why no one can get born again unless you go through Jesus. That's why Jesus Christ was not dropped from heaven. God can do it, but God did not, allow, did not drop Jesus from heaven. He has to go through Mary for nine months. So don't let any preacher tell you that God can do miracle. And so you sleep tonight, you get a child tomorrow morning. That would be a cut off. That would be a fraud. That would be a fraud. Because God could have done it, but God did not do it. So God is a man of principle and order. Yes. Amen. Are you still with me? That's it. And so, a man that God must use and might use to bring about change must rid himself of bad behaviors. Bad behaviors. You see, Naaman went away with rage. Where was the leprosy when he went away with rage? He took them with him. He took them with him. He took them with him. And see what happened in 2 Kings chapter 5. 2 Kings chapter 5. He was furious. And look at verse 13. And his servants came near and spoke to him and said, My father. In those days they called the senior my father. Said, My father, if the prophet had told you to do something great. Everybody say great. great. I know there's somebody called great here. Yeah. Amen. If God have told you to do something great, are you with me? If God have told you to do something great, will you not have done it? How much more then when he says to you, wash and be clean? Verse, 44, verse 14. So he went down and dipped seven times in the Jordan according to the saying of the man of God, and his flesh was restored like the flesh of a little child, and he was clean. Excuse me. So before now, was it not prepared for him to be healed by God? But not until he fulfilled the condition. Now that he has fulfilled his condition, no matter how long it took him, was he not healed? So look at your Goliath in front. That in the name of Jesus, I will bring your head down. In the name of Jesus, I will fulfill my destiny as long as I'm walking in the right way. You will come back to testify. So let me round up. The second point there is that if God must use you, or the third one, apart from reading yourself, of bad behaviors as you find in Ephesians 4 31 Ephesians 4 31 it says stop being bitter and angry and mad at others don't yell at one another or curse each other or ever be rude so you can see the man that God is going to use or a woman 
It's not the rude one. It's not the one that has a bad behavior. It's not the one that doesn't live right. Hello? You might have been seeing some preachers not living right, but then you have to know who they are following. If Jesus has not preached it or, or, or taught it, thought about it, don't follow them. Use Jesus as the reference point. Hello? Are you with me? Do the right thing when you have the chance. The last one, or last but one, the man that God might use is one who is nice to people, especially to strangers. You remember the story of the parable of the good Samaritan? The priest, the Levi, and the Samaritan? They all met this man that was injured on the road. You would have thought that the priest should know better, but he walked past. You would have thought the one that has a, came from the family of religious people, the Levite, would do better. He also walked past. But guess who did the right one? The Samaritan one. It's not about your status. It's not about your title. It's about your heart that matters to God. You hear that? It's not about status. It's not about title. It's about your heart. Everybody check your heart. Because God will not give to you what he knows you cannot handle. The anointing you did not respect, you should not expect. It is only the anointing you respect that you should expect that God will hurt your life. If you are the one that always disdain the things of God, how then do you want God to use you? The last one, I'm trying, God knows. Psalm 24, verse 4 to 6. Who will ascend to the hill of the Lord or who will stand before his holy temple? It is he that has a clean hand and a pure heart, who has not lifted his heart to hide us, nor sworn deceitfully. God has conditions. You cannot be lying and getting away with it and thinking that God will still use you. If the devil finds something wrong with you, he will stand accusing you before God. That's what happened. Hallelujah. Seize the moment. God will give you the moment. Number four, the man that God will use is one who is not dishonest. He is one who is true to himself. I think I need to stop here. Hallelujah. You get something? I'm believing God is the year of revelation and we have just started the month of right living. And I see people getting frustrated, flabbergasted about not making ends meet. And I look at them as if I, am, I myself am immune from those oddity of life or adversity I also go through them. I also walk. Amen. I also get turned down at times. But I don't give up. I wake up early in the morning to pray. I wake up at the fourth watch of the day to pray. To pray for all of you so that you can make it. Because once you make it, I'm also making it. That is it. Let us stand up on our feet. Seize the moment. Start to do the right thing. I don't know what God has been telling you. Come, pick all this thing. Throw in the bin. I don't know what God has been telling you, but you need to make ends meet. You need to move forward. Am I talking to you? I want you to move forward so that you two can get your own house. Why not? Those people that got their own houses, they also started like you. Yes, they've been turned down at interview, but that's not the end of the, world, end of the road for them. Just because the way is difficult doesn't mean that it's not accessible. Hello? Am I talking to you? Why don't you lift up your voices and pray to God? Pray to God that God will help you. God will show you His will in the direction that He wants you to go. This is your month. The promotion has to come your way. Healing has to come your way. Whatever the enemy has put in your way to stop you, let the Lord help you, empower you to remove them. He will remove them. 
He said, do not walk as fools, but walk as wise. Knowing what the will of God is. It is the will of God to prosper. You will prosper. It is the will of God for you to get married. You will get married. It is the will of God for you to have your children. You have your children. Amen. Whatever negative thing that they have said, that's not the will of God for you. God will turn things around for you. Ask God to help you. Whatever it takes, Lord, I am ready. Are you willing? I am ready, Lord. It is me. Help me. Please pray. Ask him because we have God here. God is present. Is anybody here that have not yet made Jesus his Lord and Savior? Ask him to save me. Draw near to God and he will draw near to you. God is not far from us as some people think. God is here with us. Call on him. Let your heart be open. Let your heart be open to God. Get your heart open to God. Lord, help me. Give me a new heart and a new spirit. I am sorry I've gone astray. But I've heard your word. You are a God of second chance, third chance, fourth chance, fifth chance, sixth chance. Jehovah, you are a gracious God. Help me, oh God. Pick me from where I've stopped. Help me to walk through the narrow gates and difficult way that has life in it. <laughs> Why don't you ask him to save you? Let him write your name down in the book of life. Let him write your name down in the book of life. Receive salvation, receive strength. I know we have running late, but thank God for that. Because God is in the house. Lord will bless you. You have exams. You have a panel. You have an assessment. Receive grace from God. Let God go with you. Commit it into the hands of God. This week will be a week of turning point for me. A week of turning point for me. A week of greatness. A week, oh God, of promotion. A week, oh God, of joy. By your power, manifest yourself. Manifest yourself. God will lead you. Say, I will instruct you and I'll teach you the way you must go. He will if you ask him. Tell him, I want to walk in the right way. I want to walk in the right way. For as many that received him, to them he gave the power to become sons of God. Even them that believe on his name, receive him. Let him become your Lord and Savior. Right now. Tell him to write your name in the book of life. He will teach you his will. You will have understanding of the will of God. You will not be guessing and goosing. Lord will bless you. All things are lawful, but all things are not helpful. Lord, I bless you. Thank him for hearing you. Thank him. Let's take the communion quickly. For I receive from the Lord that which I also deliver to you, that the Lord Jesus on the same night in which he was betrayed, he took the bread. And when he had given thanks, he broke it and said, Take it, this is my body which is broken for you. Do this in remembrance of me. For all those that have given their heart to the Lord. So simple. You partake of this. Unless if you have not given your heart to the Lord. In the same manner, he also took the cup after supper, saying, This cup is a new covenant in my blood. This do as often as you drink it. In remembrance of me for as often as you eat this bread and drink this cup you do proclaim the Lord's death till it comes so we are not doing it in vain we are doing it because we have been we, are, we we have been graced by God to be part of those who is coming back for therefore listen whoever eats this bread or drink this cup of the Lord in an unworthy manner will be guilty of the body and blood of the Lord. But let a man examine himself and so let him eat of that bread and drink of that cup. For he who eats and drinks in an unworthy manner eats and drinks judgment to himself, not the son in the Lord's body. For this reason, many are weak and sick among you and many sleep. For if we judge ourselves, we will not be judged. Please let us 
take it seriously. That as we partake of this body of the Lord, we know what it stands for. It stands for redemption. It stands for justification. It stands for grace. That Lord, as I partake of this, O oh God, I rededicate my life to you. I will follow you all the days of my life. Help me in my own difficulty. Put your hand of approval upon me, upon our church. Help us that in this month of right living, help me to live right. Make that your prayer. Live right with your husband. Live right with your wife. Live right with your children or family. Ask him to help you. That you want to become a new person in Christ. As you partake of this, new doors shall be opened for you to move forward in life. As you partake of the communion table, new opportunities shall be open for you to ascend in life. Your story shall change as you partake of this communion. In the name of Jesus, Lord will bless you. Lord will bless you. Sanctify this communion table in the name of Jesus. Do not let my word fall to the ground, but let it accomplish the purpose by which it was sent. In the name of Jesus, amen. What can wash away my sin? Nothing but the blood of Jesus. What can make me whole again? Nothing but the blood of Jesus. Please take your seat. No washes is the flow that makes me white as snow. No other fount I know. Nothing. Please take your seat. Jesus. His power mighty in the blood. You can be praying that as I partake of this, what do you expect to happen to you? In the blood, in the blood, there is power mighty in the blood of Jesus Christ. There is power mighty in the blood. In the blood, there is power mighty in the blood. In the blood, there is power mighty in the blood. In the blood. Open this for me. For I receive from the Lord that which I also deliver to you, that the Lord Jesus on the same night in which he was betrayed, he took the bread, and when he had given thanks, he broke it and said, Take, eat, this is my body, which is broken for you, do this in remembrance of me. Let's partake of it together, please. Thank you. Let's partake of it together. Thank you. The body of Jesus was broken for us so that your body will not be broken. Whatever is deterring at this time, about to break. As you partake of this, the Lord will preserve it. In the name of Jesus.
In the same manner, he also took the cup after supper, saying, This cup is a new covenant in my blood. This do as often as you drink it in remembrance of me. The life of the beast is in the blood. That's why we do blood exchange. It carries the life of God. Is it your body? Is it your, in your own body? Is life ebbing away from you? Is it anything that is ebbing away, ebbing away life? Let's restore it by the blood of Jesus. Let's believe it. If there's life in the blood, as I partake of this blood, everything that is ebbing away from me, the Lord will preserve them in the name of Jesus. Let's partake of it together. Thank you. Thank him. Thank him. Thank him. We give you victory. We give you praise, rather, for the victory. We give you praise for the victory. Lord, we honor you. Thank him for all the things he has shown you. Just like a glance. Just thank him. For faith call those things which be not as though they were. I call back the runaway man. I call back the runaway woman. I call back that lost business. I call back that lost home. I call back that lost relationship. I call back those lost members. I call back that which has been taken away from you. Lord, we bless you. Lord, we give you praise. Thank him. It's going to be a good week, month for you. It's going to be a good month for you. It's going to be a good month for you. In the name of Jesus. Thank you, Lord. We give you praise. We give you worship. Blessed be your holy name. Thank you, Lord. In Jesus' name, we have worship. Amen. Amen. Collect the offering, please. Thank you.